new 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 noops yeah okay all right first up it's a battery holder but this is a really nice battery holder okay you got some double a's you got two of them you put them in you get about like two and a half to three volts but look on the ends you get those premium jumper wires not just raw wires but you have little pluggy cables so you can plug this directly into a breadboard and it works great so you don't have to worry with those fiddly wires or soldering them of course you can solder them to a pcb and cut the wires and strip them but perfect for if you want to use these um with a breadboard or a perf board or a board with f uh, female headers or if you're doing squishy circuits and you want to like poke these into some conductive uh play-doh also great okay okay Next up, the Inky Fat. So we actually have carried a version of this. We have the red, white, and black version. And this is like this golden yellow, uh, white, and black version. So it's basically the same design, except the ink panel itself is a little bit different. And I can show it on the overhead. So let's kick it overhead style. Oh, hold on. I gotta zoom in. Um, so it's e-ink. So when I um, remove this, Bam, it stays on. And then you can see it's got black for the Blinka and then white for the background and it's kind of golden yellow. You can see that a little bit of the previous image because I didn't let it finish refreshing. It had the later fruit. But um, the other one is red, white, and black. So this is a golden yellow. I think people are gonna like the red a lot more, but sometimes you want like a little yellowish color, like a golden color. Um, it is a very unique, like a, a not as exciting as the red, um, but it is a highlight color, so it might be good for your project. Otherwise, the code's the same. Comes with a Circuit Python code, plugs right onto any Raspberry Pi. I have it on a Pi Zero here, but you don't have to use it with a Pi Zero. Can you work with a Pi Two or Pi Three? Any of the Pis with a two by twenty connector, and it comes fully assembled. So you just plug it right in, install the Python code from Pimeroni, and uh, you're good to go. Okay. Next up. All right, more from Pimeron. We got a big shipment of stuff. This is um, the graphics hat, and we're just gonna show it, you know, not lit up, and then I'm gonna show the demo lit up. It's got a, uh, this, you can see here, this is a monochrome graphic display, 128 by 64 pixels, and then around the side, there's uh, six capacitive touch buttons with um, LED backlights, and uh, it's all controlled over I squared C, so let's check this out. Okay, so we got this nice demo, it's showing Adafruit, and then you see here these buttons. See how there's like a nice um, light up that lets you know when it's touched? Light up, not, light up, not, great. Um, so these are capacitive touch buttons. And so there's a kind of green blue backlight that you can change and you can um, set it so now it's like it's turning blue and you can turn all them on. And of course you can program whatever you want the buttons to do. You don't have to have it change the backlight color. Um, I believe it's a full color backlight. It might be only green and blue, but I think, I actually don't remember, but it's at least green and blue. Um, and you can change the backlight for in the six zones. And then the buttons, you know, you program this over Python and you have it do whatever you want. Again, I've got it on a Raspberry Pi 3B plus here, but you can put it on an A plus, you can put it on a Pi zero, it'll overhang a little bit. Um, but it's also fully assembled, uh, plug and play. It even comes with some hardware to mount it securely onto your Raspberry Pi. So great if you want to make a little interface um, with buttons that people can touch. And I like the LED feedback. It's a very nice uh, diffuse look. Let's you know that the button press was uh, red by the board. So that's yeah. two Pimeroni Pi uh, stuff. And it is RGB. Yeah, I think it's RGB. It's yep. Okay, so that's the um, okay. another one. So there were two Pi money things. We're gonna have more coming soon. Okay, next up. The HC SRO4, this is like a classic sensor. I just I kind of forgot to carry this. This is a um, distance sensor. It's ultrasonic. It's got a transmitting and receiving ultrasonic. Uh, you can be like a bat or a um, dolphin and you can uh, bounce ultrasonic for 40 kilohertz waves off of things. They bounce back and it measures it. So it can do uh, distance measurements. And these are just very low cost sensors. They're often used in robotics, but they're also great if you want to do some sort of brick beam. Uh, they have a very narrow angle, or if you want to detect people walking by, or you want to detect the distance of anything. Um, so this uh, is a simple sensor. It's a five volt sensor. Uh, so we include some resistors with it. And I'll show you also a demo so you can see 
what it looks like when you use it. So I've got it hooked up here to a feather. And then the two resistors, when the data comes out of it, it's five volt logic. So you just put the two resistors in between. And then, um, you know, you've got this distance sensor and I can get closer or farther away. And uh, it'll, it'll measure, you know, my hands. Now I'm really close. Oh, hold on, too close. One second. So six centimeters. And as I go back, it goes to 30, 40. And I think it can go up to, um, I think, 400. Two, it's about 200 centimeters maximum. Um, so you can see here, it's like detecting the ceiling or something. And then eventually it's like, I can't detect anything. Um, but it's going you know, to go at one centimeter resolution. It's not uh, uh, super mega precise, but they're very cheap. I'll say that, you know, you want to toss this into a, a project. You don't have to worry about uh, breaking the bank. You can put like three or four of them, trigger one at a time so they don't collide the signal. Um, that's pretty common. You know, you'll see a robot with three or four of these around each corner. And we've got um, a link to an Arduino library that works good. And we have a CircuitPython library that also works with the Raspberry Pi. So and simply use. I'll do a question that's on here. Is that ultrasonic sensor uh, I squared C? It's not. It uses this like distance with things. So it's not I squared C, which is a little bit of a bummer. But it's very inexpensive and it only takes two pins. Um, so you can use any two digital pins that you like. And again, you can do it with MakeCode. We've got a, a library for a example code for MakeCode. We have a library for CircuitPython, and there's a lot of Arduino examples. So that's the only thing that's a little weird, is it uses this distance trigger pin pulse width thing. But, you know, it, it works pretty well, um, as you can see. And it's pretty responsive. You can, I think, do it, uh, you know, maybe 20 times a second. You can get data. Um, if you want a more precise sensor, we've got the um, uh, VL531L0X and uh, VL6108 uh, or 80X. Um, those are laser time of flight sensors. Those are going to be very precise, but you're gonna pay a little bit more. Okay. All right, so simple ultrasonic sensor for distance. All right, and tonight the star of the show, besides the community and you, Lady Ada, is? Neo Trellis. Our discount code. Which is also the discount yeah. code. Look okay, this. so this Look is what this. people have wanted this from the moment we had Trellis. Everybody was constantly asking. No, I was going to say, this is exactly what I asked for and I got it. They're going to just say, well, can, can you do anything else different? Whatever. This is, we got this. This is the first question always. Can you, can you do an RGB trellis? Since the second we showed trellis. Yeah. Can you do an RGB trellis? Yeah. So now. So now you got, got this. Our, now I got it. An RGB trellis. And as yeah. you see here, this is our little demo. And this is showing one panel. So like the trellis boards that we've sold before that were LEDs, you get these boards and each board does a four by four grid. And then you can tile them together, as many as you want, up to 32, which is a lot. And this is all done over I2C using Seesaw. So this is an I2C device. We have an interrupt pin if you want to use an interrupt input, but you don't need to. You can just pull the I2C and it's plenty fast. Um, and on the other side is uh, NeoPixels. And the NeoPixels are also handled over Seesaw. So again, you don't have to worry about what if I have a Raspberry Pi or an ESP32, and it's not great with NeoPixels. It's all done over I2C. So I have a demo of a massive grid. So like you're wondering, but what if I want more than four um, buttons? Well, you can tile them together. So you see you, you solder here. This is a mechanical connection. And on the bottom, you have the I2C and data pins. And you put a little piece of wire and you solder them. And like, yeah, don't like try to break this. But if you don't try to break it, it's not going to break. And it, it stays nice and solid. And then, of course, you solder all four together for mechanical strength. And then you only have to connect to one because it's a shared bus. And each one of them, the I2C jumpers, you short them so that each one has a unique address. And in the library, you just tell it, hey, you know, I've got uh, four boards. And then um, you get these elastomer pads that we sell, and they're sold separately. And then um, you just line up the pads there's a little nubs and then they sit nice and flat and i'll leave this one off so you can see it and then here's a, a demo it's just running off of a, a gemma m0 unless i killed the battery which i think hold on Let me plug it. okay there you go um so you can see these are the neopixels and then these are them diffused and that's like a little rainbow demo and then you can press each button and then you can do multiple button presses. It uses um, diodes so you can press as many buttons as you like. In fact, you can press all of them. Ah, so many buttons. You can just go bonkers with all your button pressing. Um, you can detect as many presses as you like. 
this one straight on. And then uh, you've got full color, and then you can control them separately. So in your code, you read the button presses, you're gonna have a callback, and then you can set it to do whatever you want. So for this demo, I just have it when you're pressing it, it lights up a color, but of course, you know, you're free to do whatever your heart desires. Um, tile as many of these as you want. We even have uh, some laser cut files if you have a laser cutter or you can 3D print. Uh, we have some 3D printed projects that you can um, follow. And this is the same mechanical shape as the old trellis. So you can reuse all of our old uh, trellis projects. And now it's just like rainbowy joyfulness. Okay, so there you go. There you go, everybody. You wanted a NeoPixel trellis? You got one. Finally, all your desires have been met. Okay. And Beep. with that, Lady Ada is... Yay!